Welcome back into the studio and another episode of Mixed Media Basics. So today we're going to review the string gels. Now these are out, I, uh, this is the Golden and the Liquitex. The Golden brand is called a Clear Tar Gel. The Liquitex brand is called a String Gel. Essentially, they are the same thing. They're thick, resinous, fluid acrylic mediums. So really it's a 100% acrylic polymer dispersion that is, it's a colorless gel. It, like I said, it's very tar-like, syrupy, stringy, honey, very, a honey-like consistency. It's very unique in that it has incredibly long, what they call rheology, or flow. So you can essentially pour it and it'll just string one long string. Golden claims that you can be poured from a three-story building in one long strand. So when I did my tester, which is this piece right here, I got it to to do that, to do a strand. I it was a challenge to get it to do it in one continuous strand. This is the Liquitex right on this side and this is the Golden on this side. Uh, this is done on a piece of watercolor paper that has black gesso poured over, the, or, uh, brushed over the top of it so that we could see it. As you can tell here, it is very super, super glossy. So it is a stringy gel and you can blend it with acrylic paint. It can be dripped, drizzled. You can use um, um, brushes. I am kind of hesitant to use a brush with this because just doing this, I notice that it is very sticky and hot. it dries fairly quickly. Although you do see here, there is a cloudiness on the thick areas here on these three spots of the Liquitex that still has not dried. And this was done early this morning. So it supposedly increases leveling and you can add up, according to Golden, you can add up to 5% of an acrylic product and increase as needed to achieve your desired con uh, consistency. So we'll test that and see how that goes. You can add water to allow um, it to do some additional leveling before it dries. Essentially it dries so quickly that sometimes you need to add water to it to lengthen that dry time so it will um, level. And they do say that it can be used as an adhesive in collage, although it is very glossy, and I'm not quite sure how that would be. You have to be someone that likes that. Um, it's very flexible, so if you're using um, art journals, that might be a bonus to being um, used in when you're creating books to be used as an adhesive because it will be very very flexible and yes it is very it's not breaking when I bend it it's not it's not brittle very flexible now I did find that for both the Golden product and the Liquitex product it can't they um, warn that it can be it can foam when you're mixing it. So you may need to leave it for long periods of time to let those bubbles come out. Now, of course I didn't mix it here. I used it straight from the jar. And even then I did have a little bit of bubbling happen in this big piece, um, this big glop right here from the golden. Don't really have that in any, well, there's a couple right in this piece and this one, but I didn't mix with this. Of course, it's straight out of the jar. So, and they suggest you let it sit for 24 hours after mixing to let those uh, foam bubbles release. So you need to mix it probably in 
um, a lidded jar, but we will test that. That's one of the things we'll look at and see if it's possible to not do that, to leave it sit um, for shorter periods and get most of the bubbles out. So the that's kind of an overview of the golden product. Basically, it's pretty straightforward with the Liquitex. Um, both of them are to increase transparency, so if you add it to acrylic products, you'll get more of um, a transparency out of those. Even if they are uh, opaque, it will increase the translucency of that opaque paint. They don't suggest you use um, more than 5% of any acrylic medium in it. You're better off using the acrylic inks to um, in, in larger quantities than acrylic paint. It leaves a wet, shiny look when dried and can, will dry to a 3D form like we see here. It kept its form, definitely. And um, it's best when you use with a soft body acrylic or acrylic inks. So we'll be using it with a medium body acrylic paint. I'll also test it with acrylic inks. I'm also going to test it as a glue, so with collage, and we're going to test it also with pigment powders. They say it can be poured, dripped, brushed, or sprayed. I do not, after doing this, I don't think you could spray it because it is very thick. So you, we might have to get it really liquid uh, down but I don't know that it would go through a spray bottle so they do not suggest you use any type of watercolor or water soluble mediums with it and no oil paints so let's get I'm gonna get set up put some under paper down and we are going to take a look at the golden clear tar gel and the Liquitex string gels all right, so the first thing we're going to do with the golden clear tar gel is I've painted this card with some black gesso. So we're just going to drizzle this on here and see the stringiness of it and do the same with the Liquitex and allow it to dry. So it might be a challenge, there we go. So I'm told that the you can get real fine lines as you're seeing here. And if you get closer, you can get thicker lines. Of course you're closer, so there's more in mass. All right, so there we have the Tar Gel by Golden. Okay, now we're going to do the string gel by Liquitex. Same method. Not really a continuous string until we get some flow going. There we go. It 
So I would imagine that if you're, this is something you're looking to do is get to get the string fl flow going with the string, you're going to need to start that off your page until you get a flow that you like. And this might work better with like a spoon where you can kind of moderate the amount of drizzle that you're getting. Um, There we go. I got more on my palette knife. And I seem to have a better flow going. Okay, so I am going to set this aside and allow this to dry so we can come back and take a look at it. And I'm going to get a around about how much time it takes for these to dry. And when they dry, they are supposed to be clear. So we'll just see the glossiness of this because this is a glossy product. So now what we're going to do is we're gonna do some mixing with acrylic paint so I have these little cups to mix in because when you're doing this, you will get foaming and both products, both Liquitex and the Golden, both said that their foaming will happen when you are mixing it. That mixing blend should be allowed to sit until the foam rises to the surface. So in general, mix, mixing with this should sit for a while for it to become bubble free. Now they say 24 hours, but I um, would be afraid that it would, um, you would have to cap it somehow so that it wouldn't dry out. So we're gonna let this sit and I'm gonna put a timer on it and see how long um, it takes for each of these to get the foam out so that you'll know how, it, when you do not have the ability to cap your containers, um, what that looks like. So you might have to do them in a capped container. So we're going to start off with the uh, golden and get that, uh, if I can get it open again. All right, now to this, I'm going to add some bright aqua green paint. I'm not going to add a ton because I still would like um, to see to have it be somewhat transparent, and that's some that's one of the attributes. Um, it will increase transparency. So we're going to get that mixed up. Oh yeah, you can definitely see it's getting. bubbles in it. I think that's good and mixed. All right, and that's the golden. And now let's do the Liquitex. And I'm going to add some yellow ochre to the Liquitex. That's a bit much. It's nice using these cups to mix because I can see how much, how well it's mixed in. This feels a lot thicker than, um, 
it doesn't feel as smooth it feels uh, harder and thicker than the golden I don't see as many oh yeah there are air bubbles I just don't see them as much and that's probably due to the thickness of it so because it's starting to dry I'm going to go ahead it does it, a lot of the bubbles have come out of it but a lot of them have not surfaced because this is so thick and so I definitely would suggest that if you're mixing that you mix into a container that is lidded so that it can sit out overnight we're gonna go ahead and test this with bubbles so we're gonna first pull out um, this is the golden that's been mixed with the bright aqua green and I have done some uh, stamping with a archival ink on the back of this card so that we can see uh, any translucency so we're gonna do the same string kind of technique maybe mix it up a little bit I'm gonna try and get oh wait we decided not to do it with this because it was a small surface and I can't get okay I'm gonna use this spatula it's not the perfect um, but it's bigger than the other was so we'll see what we can get in terms of string this has got a lot of string to it which is nice so I'm gonna try and get up high without blocking your view Yeah, that might be a little challenging. And this is going, I gotta get it into a smaller glop. So I'm just kind of spinning this as it gravity takes force and I wonder if some of it is because it's starting to set up. Ooh, lovely glop. Actually, you know what? Let's use that glop to try like just spreading it out and seeing what we get um, if it'll hold that peak and kind of bring it out a bit and then come in and see if we can't get I'm gonna this has a pointed tip so I'm wondering if that will help even though I couldn't get real good string going on but maybe I just need to get higher so I'm going to come up here, sorry. Nope. Okay. So like I said, maybe doing it on a different surface until you get a string forming might be the better way to go oh. there we get some string going there adding bubbles by doing that there we go okay hmm so when it's been mixed with acrylic paint and it does say that it does say that there it does best when it's mixed with um, acrylic inks so we're going to test that as well. So one downfall with the acrylic paint is it becomes less stringy and more gloppy, heavier, that weight, the weight is increased. So we'll test it out also on um, using some acrylic ink and see if it's easier to get that that string going we definitely get some areas that are more opaque and some areas that are more translucent depending on how thick it is 
So that is kind of a sample of the golden. Okay, so now we're gonna do the Liquitex. And again, I have done some stamping in on the background with some archival ink in black. And we'll see, I, this is even less stringy. I can tell already that we've lost some of the string with the acrylic paint. I can't even get it to, to hold the string coming out of the, and it did say um, about the quantity. So I know that I got a little bit more in here of the paint. Let's take a look and see about translucency. We do have in thicker areas, we're getting, it's more opaque and thinner areas. It is keeping its translucency, but I cannot get any string value going on here. Okay. So I've got the golden. I'm not going to make as much of it this time as I did before. I'm going to add maybe two little shovels. And a couple drops in my attempt to maintain the stringiness. I'm going to add, let's say two or three drops. Let's do two drops of the, and this is Amsterdam acrylic ink. Oh, well, that was three. So we're adding three. And I'm going to gently mix this so we don't get too many air bubbles. So I don't want to have to wait. So we'll have really nice transparency here. Oh, we've got much more string factor going on. Yeah. better string factor with acrylic ink. So I definitely suggest that you use acrylic ink as a coloring mechanism for the string gel so that you do not lose that string ability. All right, so that is the golden. And here I'm using again the Amsterdam. The last one was an Azo Yellow Deep and this is a Turquoise Blue. One, two, three. Three drops. And an easy mix here. Trying not to, I'm trying to fold more than stir vigorously. straight out of 
the cup. Yeah, I'm just going to try and do it from the... Oh yeah, much better drizzle stringiness going on with that. So acrylic paint, that wasn't a heavy body, it was more of a medium body that I was using and it's just too heavy to maintain the drizzle, the stringiness of this. has beautiful translucency. I should have put stamping underneath this, but that definitely gives you an idea. All right, I've just got some under paper out to test this on. I'm going to do some collaging of a variety of different materials. I've got the exact same materials to try with the uh, Liquitex. So I'm gonna first start off with the golden clear tar gel. I do not want to use this in my beloved brush, so I'm going to actually use, because it's thicker and so glossy, I'm going to only use a palette knife to use this. Um, so I believe that it's going to do beautifully on these heavy items. This is like a canvas piece, and I, I'm not quite sure. I think it has some Lindy spray in it. I'm not positive what was in this. Um, but it's really um, heavy and um, stiff and I think it'll do well with that. I do have tissue on here. I don't think it will do well with that, but we'll see. We're going to give it a test. I'm just going to do a section here with the golden and like I said, just use my palette knife. I just don't want to use it in any of my good brushes. And because what I've noticed when I was cleaning the pots that I did mixing in, it was really challenging once it starts to dry. And it seems, except for the stuff that had the acrylic paint in it, um, the ones with the acrylic ink dried and started setting up really fast. This is a piece of a security envelope. They have a tendency to, the ink on these have a tendency to bleed with water. I was curious to see how it would do um, with this. It is not moving that security envelope ink. And I've used this exact envelope so I know this will bleed. So that's interesting. It's kind of challenging to use in this manner because it is so stringy kind of wants to get away and it's very very sticky it's like I don't want to get it on my fingers because it's so sticky but just And then this is tissue, and I've been a little worried about the tissue, how that will go down. You are definitely not going to be repositioning things. It dries very quickly, or at least it's so sticky, it feels like it's just going to hold on to stuff. So it's definitely not the, my prefer, would not be my preferred use for it. We're gonna use the Liquitex and do the same thing. This is, I noticed, is not as stringy out of the jar like the Golden is.
this is not moving the ink on that security envelope either. I do feel like this is setting up pretty quickly, even in the jar. Yeah, no repositioning on this either. Definitely not a recommended use for it, but it could, in a pinch, work well, especially for heavy weight items. Uh, did pretty good even on the tissue. Um, yeah, so let's let this sit and dry, and I'll be back, and we'll actually do some mixing of some pigments right on this sheet, and um, see how that works. Okay, these dried super fast, super fast. Um, this one's completely dried. This has got a little bit, no, not even really that sticky. There's a couple spots that are a little sticky, but I don't even have any on my hands. So very fast, looks completely wet because it's so glossy. So what I'm gonna do now is I am going to use a little bit of pigment powder in these to see how they mix with the pigment powder. I'm gonna use a palette knife right on the table. So we're gonna start off with the golden. I can see where um, this is gonna make a lot of air bubbles. So again, this is something you might want, if you don't care about the air bubbles and it's not a non-issue, but if you do, then um, it is going to be an issue um, and you'll have to put it in a container that's sealed. So, there we go. I don't think you can really see those air bubbles but there are it's hard to see with the glossy surf surface um let's see about the string value i don't think we're gonna lose any of it but it is it does dry very fast especially here in arizona it is winter here but it's still it's just not wanting uh, to move this is the golden it does have some beautiful translucency. But it is, it's just drying up so quickly. So maybe adding a little bit of water. Um, you can um, loosen it up a little bit with water and that might help keep it from drying so quickly. I'm not sure it mixed really easily so that was nice so that's with the golden so we're gonna do the same thing with the Liquitex and this is more of a silvery pearlized pigment oh, well got a little bit carried away there We'll see, this is kind of glumpy because of the metallic in it. Whoop. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Easy to mix the pigments in, real easy. I don't see, there's a few air bubbles, but not as many as I had before with the pink. These are larger. You can kind of see them coming to the surface here. I don't know if you can see that real easily there. So I've got more on my palette. Let's see 
if I can get it. It just doesn't want to. There we go. Maybe just glump. It's there we go. We got a little string going there, but really not much string going on. Um, but that's really fun to use with pigment. It just mixed so nicely and it, because of its translucency, it just allows that color to really come through. All right, so I'm going to let this dry and then I'm going to come in with some distress sprays. Now, they suggest that you do not use these with water soluble. Um, so non-acrylic mediums, they suggest you stay away from. So watercolors, oils, that kind of thing. But I'm going to do it because I want to see how it reacts. That's just the way I work. I like to experiment and find out things that I like the response, the chemical response to it, um, uh, how it, it plays together. So uh, we're going to do that next. I'm going to let this dry and we're going to test it on dry. And then I'm going to put some down that's wet and test it down on wet. So let me get this dried and I'll be back. Okay, this, uh, the golden with the pigment took a lot longer to dry. I pulled out my heat gun to try and get that to dry. It um, did not want to dry. Um, both of these are the same brand. One is metallic, one is not. That's the only difference. I have no clue what the brand is on this. I apologize. I just grabbed the first one. And this dried a lot faster. I did not have to use the blow dryer on the Liquitex mixed with the pigment. So I'm not quite sure if that has something to do with the metallic versus the non-metallic or the Liquitex versus the golden. Okay, now that this is dry, I'm gonna start off with the golden and I'm gonna actually add some golden um, string gel and leave it wet to see how it reacts with um, the Distress products. I'm going to kind of put this down in a couple different areas and just see how it reacts across the board with those products, either wet or dry. Let's see if there's anything that happens. And again, it is not recommended to use these types of products um, with this string gel. Both Liquitex and Golden suggest you stay away from watercolors or oil paint specifically and these are water soluble okay so i've got an oxide i got a couple of oxides and a spray stain i'm gonna start off and this is sponge sugar really wicking away here uh, with the with where the wet was it looks like it's staying on where the dried was with the oxide so that'll be interesting well maybe not it's wicking a little bit where it's dry here that's come out from where I glued that paper down so it's more or less sticking to the paper I think there so let's take a look at the spray stain and see how that reacts. I have wet and dry there. And this is old paper. This is speckled egg. I love these colors together. That's why I picked them. I know they work well together.
Okay, I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to just move right on into the Liquitex. Get some wet going down. Three different places there. You can see how it's wicking away from that dry area here. That's the oxide. This is the spray stain going right into where that wet is. But you can see it is really wicking away from where the dry was. Just beating up. So this is really responding more like I anticipated both of these would uh, for using it uh, a water soluble or a water reactive in here and it's doing it for both the oxide spray and the spray stain you can really see where that I took that All right, I'm gonna let this dry and see how it dries, if it dries. This might not even dry because it looks like it's really sitting on the surface. Whereas this looks like it's really going into the paper and um, kind of going into it. So, except for I ha where I had the Liquitex, where it's dry. This is wet right here, this is wet golden right here. This is dry Liquitex from when I did that tissue right there. So we're going to let that sit and dry and see what ends up happening there. All right, this has for the most part dried um, and over here on the golden side, I only have this spot right here that seems like it's a little wet and yep, in fact it is so it and I've used a dryer on it and it still has not dried and then on the Liquitex side I have spots here and here and I had spots here and then of course right here so I'm gonna blot those up because they will not dry so you can see those did not dry. And I suspect, yep, these right in here are not dry either. So that's something to keep in mind when you're doing this. And the other thing is that we had some really awesome spots that are completely dry and that was where the um, gel was still wet when I put the oxides or the distress products on it. This is totally dry. I'm going to put up um, a photo, close up photo of this so you can see what it did. It like marbleized as well as right in here. I had some of that. Um, I had a little bit here, but it wasn't as cool as these spots were, which I'm going to put up here for you to see in detail. So this could definitely be something fun to play with in the future with the string gel. Not necessarily as a string um, product, but definitely um, to play with. So I wanted to show you the this and how that ended up. 
something for you to investigate further if you choose to do so. This is kind of fun. The patterns that I got out of this, and I'm sure that this will probably dry on regular paper. So, and um, so I wanted to show you that, as well as show you these. So you can see here we did have air bubbles. Wait a minute. There we go. We did have air bubbles right in here, and this is dry. And you can see where they came to the surface. There's quite a few of them in this deep, heavy stuff. You can see some out in here. I don't know if you can see that very well. There you go, you can kind of see the pittedness of it. So it's definitely, if you don't want that kind of look, then it's definitely important to mix into a lidded jar and let it sit for 24 hours. Didn't have so much here with the Liquitex that came through. There's a little uh, bubble right here. This does not feel completely dry, but it's been sitting all day, so it's it's dry to the touch, but I'm sure there, if it were clear, we'd see some opaqueness there, some, some fogginess um, that would happen, was happening. And this is the dry, the alcohol ink added, very um, fun um, translucency there that would, be, would have been really fun to do something like this with and using that, but we did get the nice drizzle with that. We were able to maintain the stringiness of it by using the, the acrylic inks. This is the original thing that we did. We still have some fog going on there. I, I suspect it might be some crazing. We'll see if it ever goes. This has been sitting all day. So that was interesting. Now I had a lot of this left over. And so what I did was I sprayed some, this was the Liquitex and I sprayed, it was really thin and I sprayed some distress oxides over this and everything is dry there is nothing that is beaded up like it did here not quite sure what the difference is but it did end up drying so that was interesting but I did not this was not really wet when I sprayed it over. It was dry, so we didn't get that marbling effect that we did there. So that's kind of a sampling of some of the things that, ways that you can use it. Um, you saw the pigments. The pigments are on here. That was the metallic one. The pink one is harder to see now because it's kind of blended, blended in. It was right in this area. That took a little bit of time to dry, although the metallic did not take too much time to dry. Um, I did want to kind of go through the pricing. So with the golden um, clear tar gel, this comes in an eight ounce size. It comes in a 16 ounce size, a 32 ounce size, and 120 eight ounce size and these are the prices now these are based on um, the time of this filming and these are from blick.com so the liquitex it comes in an eight ounce and it comes in a 16 ounce only and these are the prices for it so screenshot those if you want to keep that for referencing. But yeah, well, I hope that this has been um, beneficial and helpful for you to make some decisions around whether or not you want to utilize string gel as something in, in your palette or at least even play with it some more and see what you can get it to do for you but thank you for coming along once again for mixed media basics